And so we're going to continue on in our discussion about firewall rules uh, by looking at an actual environment that we might work on, uh, which would be an email environment for Microsoft Exchange. Now, if we go for a very, very simple Exchange environment, let's say we have our Exchange server right here. So our exchange environment is behind a firewall that is then connected out to the internet. So as we're looking at the internet, now we have two kinds of questions that we have to worry about. We have to worry about what are our clients doing in order to access that exchange server? How are clients accessing it? How are clients logging in? How are clients receiving their email? How are, are other companies sending email to that server? So we have to look at the flow of the traffic from the internet into the exchange environment. And then at the same time, we have to worry about how the exchange server communicates back out. How does Exchange send emails to other servers out on the internet? How does Exchange re uh, send the emails down to all the clients that are out here on the internet uh, that are just simply trying to read their email? How do I get my calendar? How do I see all the free busy information? Uh, you know, how does this computer out here on the internet talk to the Exchange server, log in, and say, I want to view all my emails, and then for the Exchange server to respond back? Well, it turns out when we're talking firewalls, these directions of in versus out, as well as the protocols become very, very important. How do we handle this? What, what kind of rules do we put here on our firewall in order to make that work properly? Well, that's the benefit of documentation. Yay, documentation. So here we have an exchange, or I'm sorry, a document online from Microsoft talking about the network ports for clients and mail flow in Exchange. This is a Microsoft Exchange server. Long gone are the days where it was one simple it's server that hosted all of your email and calendaring and free busy. And uh, that was a long, long time ago. We're going to go under the assumption that we're still able to live in that world of having only one Exchange server in our environment. And then to make everything simple, we're going to assume everybody is working on the internet. There is no internal corporate environment. There is simply the exchange server and everything is outside of the exchange server. You'll see why, why that's important as we move forward. So this documentation comes in and at first you're like, wow, this is all looks really boring. Uh, and then we start getting to this diagram right here and things start seeming like they make sense. It's pretty much the diagram I just talked about. Over here on the right is the Exchange server. Uh, specifically, this is the client access service, but we won't worry about that. We'll just call it the Exchange server. Here's our firewall down here, uh, drawn the line right between the internet and the Exchange server. And it talks about all the client applications and the protocols necessary for things to send back and forth. So here we can easily see, oh, well, we need ports 443, 80, uh, 143, 993, 110, 995, and 587. Well, that's easy. So we can easily see from this diagram, those are the ports we need, and they are that way. From the internet, they would be inbound to the client or outbound from the internet, depending on your point of view. Well, hey, that's that's a piece of cake. Now we can start firing up our Excel lists and come up with a uh, with our spreadsheet talking about all of our systems. So if we start off with a allow slash deny source uh, destination, uh, yeah, sure. We could go as far as into protocols. Uh, I'm just gonna say direction. Let's let's go really, really simple and just say allow, deny, source, destination, and direction. So this is going to say that I want to allow, oh, actually I do want port. Let's change that to protocol, port. So I want to allow from the internet, port 443, 
uh, and I want that to be, let's say, inbound, inbound into my organization. Uh, like I said, it could also be outbound in from the internet. Uh, we have to take a stance and say we're inside the organization or we're outside the organization. I choose in. Uh, actually, let's also add in a rule name and we'll call this uh, inbound exchange. There we go. So now we have the start for our rules. Uh, we can just simply look at the remainder of these items right here. Allow from the internet, ports 80, uh, inbound, and then that's also inbound exchange. Ports uh, allow, internet 143, inbound, allow, internet 993, inbound, uh, allow, 110, oops, internet, excuse me. This is why we planned this out ahead of time, because my fat fingering right there could have just messed everything up. Uh, so in, keep it all case, same case sensitivity, allow internet 995 in internet, and then allow internet 587 inbound. And there we have our list. So that right there is a very quick and easy way to be able to start coming up with our access lists. We can now create an access list called inbound exchange, allow all of this traffic inbound into our organization. Again, it will depend on our interface, which interface we put it on, whether it's gonna be inbound or outbound. Um, yeah. Uh, and then at the very end there, deny. Great. Well, let's look a little bit more detail in here because that's what the documentation is there for, is to provide us details. <laughs> we can start seeing that 443 is an encrypted web communication with all of these services that it, that it provides. That's awesome. We can look through all of these services like Auto Discover. Do we want Auto Discover to work? Yes, we do. Therefore, we have to have that port. Do we want Exchange Active Sync to work? Yes, therefore, we need 443. Do we want offline address books? Do we want Outlook on the web? Yes, then we need 443 to be enabled. Uh, port 80 is unencrypted web communications. Ooh, I don't like the idea of unencrypted web communications. Let's see exactly what it's for. It's for internet calendar publishing. Do I want to publish calendars on the internet? I don't know, maybe? Outlook on the web, redirecting to 443. So what this does is when somebody goes to like mail.greenriver.edu, it simply redirects to the HTTPS version. Do I want my web server to do that? Or maybe do I want something else to do that? Maybe something else. Auto discover. Do I want auto discover to work on port 80 if 443 is not available? Maybe not. Maybe I don't want port 80 in here at all. Maybe I've looked through those, what those features are, and I've decided, you know what, for port 80, or for my firewall, I don't actually want this to work here. Let's see, strike through. There we go. So maybe I don't want port 80 in here. Maybe I do. Uh, really the question is, or what, what the purpose is, is I have to look at this, I have to know why it's doing it, uh, and then decide. IMAP, IMAP clients. What does IMAP do? Well, uh, it says IMAP is the default. Oh, no, I'm sorry. IMAP is disabled by default. Uh, ooh, well, if it's disabled by default, then do I even want the port open? Probably not. Oh, geez. Well, it's a good thing I looked through that. That's both of those lines there. Let's strike those through. POP3 is another way for clients to be able to access their email. Uh, it says POP3 is disabled by default. If it's disabled by default, it's probably not super secure. So I will go ahead and just block that in my firewall as well. I won't open that either. Is it both of these ports? Yes. And then SMTP authent uh, uh, authenticated clients. Uh, allows the server to authenticate SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol. 
Uh, it allows us to receive authenticated clients to send email to the server. So I do need that port. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've looked at all of the flow here, according to the documentation anyways, from the internet. How do people from the internet get into my mail server? So I've got half the flow. Awesome. Uh, a piece of cake when we know where to look. By the way, how did I find this web page? Um, I simply Googled it. I think I said exchange ports. Um, there we go. Very first result, network ports for client mail flow. Uh, if I was more specific, I would look for a specific version number, like 2019, uh, of whatever my exchange version was. Or if this was SQL or PeopleSoft or, you know, whatever application my environment's using, I would look specifically for that, either online or from the vendor's website. So we've got all the inbound traffic. Now we need to worry about the outbound traffic. Uh, thankfully, the Microsoft documentation is really, really nice for this. And it talks about outbound. So we talked about how people get in. How do people get out? Well, in this case, it's really, really simple. It is simply port 25 outbound. Uh, again, there's this gets a little complex. There's actually two services right here, uh, transport and the front end transport. We're going to assume we just have one simple server, which has the whole transport and everything else built into it. So that means we need an outbound port 25. So that means we need to go back to our email or our firewall rules here. Because we were looking at the inbound rules before, we now need an outbound. Outbound exchange. And I will allow the source in this case is going to be the exchange server port 25 and the direction is going to be out not sure how that got marked out there we go uh, again inbound versus outbound this is from the point of view of our internal environment Uh, let's look through here. It gives us more details. Uh, P TCP 25 is SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, and is what is used by all the internet servers in order to send email from one to another, at least all standardly configured email servers. Oh, DNS for name resolution was not pictured. DNS was not in the list. How did we miss DNS? Okay, so now we need to actually add in another rule for port 53. Ooh, both UDP and TCP, uh, we had actually been assuming everything was just TCP. So now we need to add in a couple more rules. What? The documentation wasn't fully complete? No, the documentation wasn't fully defined. And so now we have to go back and revisit it. All right, I'll have to unmark that later. Outbound, and we'll call this out exchange. And then same thing for 53 UDP. All right. And at that point, now everything should be able to be working at now we can take this flow that we have now that we've gone through and we've seen uh, from the outside traffic goes this way from the inside traffic goes that way and we've identified exactly which rules we need in our environment now we can start looking in our in our firewalls or our pack, uh, routers or switches and defining access lists according to these flows now we know how the traffic flows now we can start defining it uh, it's sometimes it's hard to, to stop and think before you actually start doing. I am personally responsible for failing at that quite a bit. Uh, so briefly, before we end this, I uh, did want to, t uh, I told you that this was a very simple one server. Everything's out on the internet. Uh, why was I doing that? Well, because things start getting more complicated when you have both an internet and an intranet. So here you have what's called an edge server. This would be in your DMZ. Uh, and then your mail server, this would be like in your corporate environment or your private environment. 
And so now you have a firewall here, you have a firewall here, and now instead of having just one set of firewall rules, you now have two, which again is the ideal way to start configuring things and have multiple firewalls and segment every portion from everything else. Uh, I wanted to make it really simple so that we only had two access lists to create, uh, inbound exchange and outbound exchange, as opposed to two access lists here and two access lists here.